My Iron Man is pretty well geared. I have a Twisted Bow, I even have a Sight of Bitter. But there is one clear hole in my gear setup that needs to be worked on, a special attack weapon. Most places in the game you're able to use the two main defense reducing special attack weapons, the Bandos Godsword and Dragon Warhammer, to lower an enemy's defense and get more DPS out of your main weapons. However, there are places that either have too low HP for this to be viable, or Jagex has manually implemented caps on how much defense can be reduced on a specific NPC. For those scenarios, I'm looking for a DPS special attack weapon to use. Currently going through my gear tab, it looks as though a Dragon Dagger is still my best special attack weapon. However, there are two main ones out there that I'm looking to go and grind out. The Void Waker and Dragon Claws. Both are incredibly accurate and hard hitting weapons. To give an example of how good they can be, I ran some DPS calculations on Vardorvis, which is a middle of the road NPC when it comes to defense, having 215 defense and 65 slash defense. Using my otherwise best in slot gear, the Dragon Dagger special attack will hit two times with 45% accuracy and a max hit of 44. That leads to an average damage of 19.8. A nice amount, probably better than a singular fang hit, but we can do better. Dragon Claws, on the other hand, have a complicated way of calculating damage. I won't get into it here, but essentially they are super accurate as they have 4 hits as part of their special attack, and it maxes out at an 86. Alongside its accuracy of 92% leads to an average damage of 50.7. That is more than double that of our current Dragon Dagger special attack. The Void Waker provides a different kind of attack. It's a guaranteed hit dealing between 50 to 150% of your original maximum hit. It also deals the damage as a magic damage. Using that same melee setup from before, it deals between 25 to 73 damage, leading to an average hit of 49. Slightly worse than Claws, but it has the utility of never missing and guaranteed damage to make up for it. By virtue of just getting one of these weapons, I can add about 30 damage every time I use their special attacks, and that'll add up pretty quickly. From this example, it's clear a DPS special attack weapon is the biggest thing my account needs right now, but the question is which one? And by the title of the video, you might have guessed it, but it's the Void Waker, and the reasons for that are twofold. First off, claws are incredibly difficult to get. It's approximately 1 in 20 million points from chambers, which could be anywhere from 500 to 800 solos of the raid. It's something you get while going for other items like the Twisted Bow or Ancestral. While for the Void Waker, if on drop rate, it's only 2900 wilderness mini boss kills, much more achievable. And the second reason why is that the main raid content grind I'm doing right now is Tombs of a Masket to get Masori. And the Void Waker works better at those bosses than Claws due to their high slash defense throughout the raid. But without further ado, let's start the Void Wicker grind. Now, in order to prepare myself for the wilderness, I want to make sure I have like a large stack of all the items I'm bringing into the wilderness. Um, for example, here, uh, I don't have any Amulet of Glories in the bank, and I want to make sure I get some uh, glories that I can wield. And if I lose them, it's not a big deal. Like if I have 20 in the bank, I'm going to die 20 times. Also get some snakeskin boots, get some snakeskin bandanas from all the snakeskin that I got from Zolra. Uh, basically just prepare myself. The one item that's going to be probably the toughest to get is these black dehyde chaps. Uh, but I got a plan for it as kind of the peril of not doing hard clues and then turning all my dehyde into dehyde bodies instead of also using legs and evening it out. Uh, but that's a lesson for the future. 31 crossbows. I'm I'm really hoping that that's going to last me. And I'm also going to be using rune gloves. Basically, the reason why I'm doing this is Barrow's gloves are 104k. Rune gloves are 5k each. Uh, and the difference between them is pretty minimal. Especially because I'm mostly going to be ranging. Rune gloves provide a plus 8 strength but, and plus 8 in all the accuracies. While Barrow's gloves provide plus 12. Um, so I'm losing out on four ranged attack. Uh, when I'm meleeing, I'll probably use Barrow's Gloves, but whenever I'm ranging, I'm going to be using Rune Gloves. And I thought about killing Vorkath, but I figured because Brutal Black Dragons drop two per kill, and I already have the uh, Dragon Hunter Lance, that this should be pretty easy to get. Like, I'm not taking that much damage, and the accuracy is super high, so maybe a minute per kill. 
one inventory of black dragon leather. I think that should be enough. Eventually, I will get to that point where I, I'm getting a profit of black dehyde um, in the bank that I can make more if I ever run out. But this should, this should last me. So this is my gear setup for Ardeo. I got myself the Bofa with two pieces of crystal and the Slayer helmet. Uh, that means that my uh, item lost on death if I'm killed by a player above level 20 with protect item. Um, I keep the four of these items and I lose everything else. Not too big of a deal. Um, if I do get smited, I will lose the Slayer Helm, but I have four black masks in the bank, so I can easily recreate that. I'll just take some Nightmare Zone points to re-imbue them. Uh, but apart from that, as long as I don't skull, I shouldn't lose anything important. So the hardest part about this is actually getting the, the free scout. Uh, because right now, because I'm under 20 kills, I can't actually scout any of the things in the wilderness, and I have to just rely on the fact that I have to find a free world or get someone to teleport away, and it's very frustrating. I've gotten away from the one PK that's that's hit me with the telebox so far. One change they made is if your magic attack is above zero, that means you are 100% chance of freezing Callisto. So for me to do that, all I need to do is take off the crystal body, and every single time it's going to hit right away, and then I can put the crystal body back on. So that's going to make things a lot easier here. Each of the Wilderness bosses have three unique drops that I am looking for. They each drop a Void Wicker piece at a rate of 1 in 912. They also drop a Revenant weapon upgrade at 1 in 618, which gives each of the Rev weapons a unique special attack. And their third drop is their unique ring at a rate of 1 in 716. That is a total of 9 unique drops to get, plus an additional 3 from Revenants for 12 drops total. In terms of goals, I really only care about completing the Void Waker and getting the Ring of the Gods from Calvarion. Past that, the other two rings are useless to me and the Rev Weapon upgrades only matter if I get lucky on Revenants. One of the big benefits of these Wildy Bosses is that they drop Super Compost, which means if I kill enough of these, I'll never have to make my own Super Compost ever again. I also got a Laren's Key that's going to open Laren's Chest in the Wilderness, which is kind of like a Konar's Chest, but for Wildy Slayer. Um, and there's also the Dagonite Robes that are associated with it, so maybe when I'm done all the Wildy content, I'll go ahead and open the Laren Keys. And that's probably going to be the end of my longest trip yet. I think that was over 20 kills. I think I came in with 31 and now I have 53. Um, with this whole technique of getting the mage attack above zero, just taking off the crystal body, it makes it so easy to avoid damage. Now I just got to bank quickly so that I'm back in time. Unfortunately, got crashed with one left on task. They can have it. I'll kill a grizzly bear here and end the task. And there is 86 bears laid, 85 which were Ardeo, and I need to do more tasks before I start actually getting something out of it. But one of the cool things about already having 99 Slayer is the fact that when I go to get a Slayer task here, after getting a good task like Revenants, Bears, Spiders, I have a 10% chance of being able to do that task again. And it didn't happen this time. So when I get a task I don't want, like Crystalia, I can either spend 30 points to skip it, that's a big waste. Instead, I can Turiel skip. And now, instead of getting the Wilderness task from Crystalia, this process will reset your task streak. But because I have a Wilderness task, it's only going to reset my Wilderness task streak, and my main task streak of 795 is going to stay the same. Um, so now I have to kill 43 zombies. And task complete, and you see my task streak increased from 796 to 800. So that means when I get to points where I'm going to be getting like a big milestone, like let's say 800, instead of doing this Turiel skip, I'll go to Konar, and that way I can bank up some points to put my block list in line with what is good for Crystalia and Turiel. And Chaos Druids, again, not a good task, so we do the same thing and go back to Turiel. and repeat, next thing you know, I got the Void Waker. 500 points for my 800th task is going to be really good for the point economy, especially when I get to like bigger milestones like a thousand, where I think it'll be a thousand points instead. For going back to Ardeo quickly, I did not expect to get this as quick. Like, it's a, like with my current block list, a three and a half percent chance of getting a bear task, and I've already gotten two in like seven or eight. Um, so I guess we're doing Ardeo on a Sunday night. Holy crap, the PKers are going to be bad. 
That is task complete. Uh, my second RDO Slayer task done. Um, no drops yet, which is kind of surprising. Uh, you would anticipate you'd have like one of them by now. And here's the first thing I want to add to the ban list. Magic axes have a weight of seven and anything weight of seven or higher that I don't want to do is going to go on the ban list. Greater Demons and Black Demons are going to stay on the block list as they have a weight of 8 and 7 respectively. But eventually we will put Fire Giants, Hellhounds, and Ice Warriors in these three slots. I've been duoing some Callisto with Nuznuz. This is the big version of the Wildy Boss. They have a much better drop rate at 1 in 360 for the Void Waker piece. But because we are duo, it's essentially a 1 in 720 drop. On top of that, the task doesn't seem to go down every kill, but every other kill, extending my Slayer task. This method seems great if you really don't want a Turio skip, as it only takes a couple tasks to reach drop rate, but the PKRs are worse and the boss is slightly harder. I think I'll duo if the PKRs aren't bad that night, I have a task and he's around, but I'm okay soloing RDO. And while I was doing this, I also picked up a Dragon Pickaxe, another mill to the bank. All right, rev task in tow, and even though I have a Slayer task, I'm not going to be using the Slayer Helm because the Salve Amulet is better and they do not stack. You can see I'm getting 20% damage and accuracy um, against all undead creatures. But the reason why I'm going after these Slayer tasks is that normally there is only a 1 in 5300 chance of hitting the weapon table when killing revs, especially the Revenant Knight, that's the one I'm looking at. While when you look at on task and scold, that drops all the way down to 1 in 586, which is pretty crazy. Um, and once you hit that table, there's a 2 of 5 chance of getting a Amulet of Avarice, and then a 1 of 3 of getting any of the weapons. Weapons-wise, I would be happy as long as I don't get the crossbow. Um, the Vigorous Chain Mace is best in slot at 2 of the bosses, and then the Thamron Scepter would be best in slot at Callisto slash Ardeo. Well, my first non-getting PK trip done, I think I got like 10 kills there, though my looting bag is pretty full uh, with loot, and I saw a PKer there killing someone else, so I thought, you know what, let's just leave, rebank, get another skull. Um, it goes away after 20 minutes, so I have to make sure that I uh, keep the skull up to keep the drop rate high. One long Slayer task complete, uh, 158 Revenants, Got myself about 4 mil in loot. I'll put it on screen right now. Um, I only died twice. I think I got attacked like 7 times. Um, but 2 people got the full TVs on me and I just couldn't get gap. Not the collection log slot I was looking for, but picked up a dragon 2 hand sword. You can get this from like 8 different bosses. So um, Funny that I got it here at Ardeo. Uh, but maybe next time... The collection log can be the Void Waker piece. I got another long one. What the fuck? I have two in my inventory. Took a little bit. I think it was like 10 tasks between, but got a rev task. It's 1 a.m., so I'll probably get like an hour or so into it. See how the PKing is. See how long I can last. I stayed up way too late to get this Slayer task done. It's almost 4 in the morning. Uh, I haven't stayed up this late in forever. Uh, but it means tomorrow I can wake up and work on getting a new task. But that is 134 uh, revenants killed. Got myself another bear's task again from Turiel. So it's only 45, not a big task. And I've also decided to switch things up a little bit with the gear setup. It'll be very weird that I Mystic Boots and the Ring of Shadows on. Uh, but what this does is it gives me plus one magic attack without having to swap over... Um, to like take before I was taking off the crystal body in order to ensure the fact that I got enough magic attack bonus. All in all, it's just going to be a really nice uh, quality of life. Not including all the supplies and, and drops, um, I would lose 98k, while before I was probably only losing like 20 or 30k. Um, so it is a like about a 80k increase in risk, but I'll probably only die a couple times at Ardia, so I think it'll it'll pay for itself in terms of quality of life. That is Dragon Pickaxe number five. Yay! Oh my god, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Holy shit, I need to get out of here. Holy shit.
It's in the looting bag. Oh my god, I'm good, I'm good, I got it. Holy shit. Yes, 344 kills and I got the Void Waker. Oh, well, no, I don't have the Void Waker. I have one piece of the Void Waker. That is the Void Waker hilt from Ardeo, which means I guess Bear's tasks are now useless to me. I will preemptively put it in my items I don't want to destroy, but I don't kind of have a use for yet. Deposit one Void Waker hilt. That is one of the three items. This means I now don't need to kill Ardeo or Callisto in the future. Um, I don't need to complete Bear's tasks from anyone. I can just skip them or complete them outside of the wilderness if it's from Turiel. On top of that, I do want to shout out this setup. It worked a hundred times better than the previous setup where I had to take off the crystal body and then put it back on after barraging. This just makes it super simple. And the fact that I wasn't losing as many ticks and also every single Bofa shot was with the crystal body on meant I was getting about 10% more kills per hour. I was getting like up to 45 if I was not getting interrupted. I feel like halfway to drop rate is probably an accurate statement in terms of items to still get from them. Um, I still need to get the Closet Callisto, which is an upgrade to the Mace, Begora's Chain Mace, and then the Tyrannical Ring, which is a best-in-slot crush weapon. Um, I think I might come back to Callisto and Arneo if I get a Begora's Chain Mace, but I won't go for it until um, I get to that point. Ooh, I got the 16 mil Relic. Holy shit, I need to get out of here. That was uh, pretty crazy. That is the 16 mil relic. It turns into 16 mil if you bring it in. Um, so that's going to pay for like every death uh, for quite a while. Yes, I got Thamarin Scepter. Okay, I made a big mistake and put the Scepter in the looting bag. And if I die, I lose the looting bag. Well, <laughs> okay, I've made it out so I can relax a little bit. The Thamron Scepter is a slightly worse version of the Trident. It's three base max hits worse than the Trident of the Seas, and six base max hits worse than the Toxic Trident. However, it has a passive in the Wilderness giving it 50% damage and accuracy, making it the best in-slot weapon whenever you need to mage in the Wilderness. It can be upgraded with the Skull of Vedion from Calvarion or Vedion, granting it a Dragon Warhammer style defensive reduction for magic attacks. But more on that later. So weapons-wise, I think it's probably the second one I wanted. Uh, the Vigorous Chain Mace is obviously the best because it's best in slot at the other two. Um, but the Thamron Scepter, I think, is a little bit better than the Crossbow because it has some utility with bursting in the wilderness in the future. All right, got myself my first spider task. Time to do some DPS calculations, figure out what my best in slot is and uh, how I'm going to go forward. I think I've decided on doing a melee here, and that means I'm going to pick up Mythical Capes. They currently cost uh, 10,000 each, and I don't think they change. Uh, so we'll just buy up 15 of them. Hopefully I don't die 15 times at Spindle. There we go. I think this is my best setup. Uh, the risk is very minimal. Um, the damage should be high. I should be hitting for high 40s max with the spear. Um, and if I do happen to mess up, uh, the items kept on death, I will lose the Slayer Helm. So as long as I don't Skull, it's impossible for me to lose the Avernic, the Hosta, or the Berserker's Ring. Oh, I got Red Spider Eggs the very first kill, and that is exactly why I'm here, because I do not want to farm those anymore. So this task went by swimmingly well. I'm much happier with the melee setup on instead of the range setup that I did in that one task, like, six months ago that I did. Even if you don't have a crush weapon and you have the Bofa, I would highly, highly suggest just sticking to melee. Even if Dragon Mace is your best weapon, you saw the specs just go off there. It can be really good. Made myself the rest of my Dragonstone Bolts. I think I got the Dragonstone Bolt tipped mostly from Zora because it drops about one per kill and I did about a thousand there. So I got 1778 bolts, and I got the large stack of Runite Bolts here, not through Fletching, but actually through Hallowed Sepulcher. So I think in the future, for future accounts, like before I do something with the RCB, like let's say Demonic Gorillas, I might go ahead and uh, do some Hallowed Sepulchre to get some Runite Bolts. Uh, that is a lot of them. For the first time in probably 100 Crystallia tasks, I got a Spider task. That means that the task is not going to be 30 minutes long, and instead this is going to be multiple hours. 
That is Slayer Task complete and over 200 spindle. I have still yet to be actually PK'd here. Uh, I've been attacked maybe like four or five times, which is not that common. I've probably been at spindle for six hours, so that's less than one attack per hour. I, uh, I would have imagined that it would have been way more common, but they haven't had a successful TB on me yet every single time I've teleported out. Uh, before the TB has gone off. Before we get into the next task, I thought I would go over exactly how I'm scouting worlds here. Or, well, how I'm not getting PK'd. I have my RS3 main account here uh, sitting right outside the Spindle Cave, and I have a couple plugins helping me. First, I have player indicators. Uh, this will just draw a red name above someone's head so I can see the RSN helps me. Uh, recognize names, you can kind of see if someone's a PKer. I also have Entity Hider on. I chose the option to hide NPCs. Uh, this just makes it so nothing's really moving on screen. Because uh, when I was first doing this, I would like say I'm like this, and then the spider comes into frame, and I'm like looking over on my other monitor to see uh, if anything was coming up, and uh, I got baited a couple times. Uh, the other option is this Wilderness Player Alarm. Uh, basically, what it does is whenever someone gets within uh, 15 tiles of my character, it flashes the screen red back and forth. I have it on to ignore friends and ignore clan, so anyone on my friends list won't cause this problem. Uh, but I'll just hop back to the previous world because I know that there is someone scouting there. So you can see what it looks like. Uh, uh, so it'll do this flash every single time someone's there. So when I see the flash, I go look at my other monitor. If I see a PK skull, I'll look at the character. And if I see them do the animation where they're entering the cave, I click the pod on my main account. Basically, it's impossible for me to die as long as I'm paying attention. Uh, the only annoyance is every time a PKer goes in there, I, I tend to lose the world. Oh, I'm just thinking about this. Uh, but that is the treasonous ring. Um, I think it's the stab ring. Yeah. So instead of providing crush bonus or strength bonus or anything, it provides stab accuracy. Um, I don't really know where that's viable. I'm trying to think of places and I really can't. Um, but that is a collection log slot unlocked and minus one bank space for quite a long time. First update on the drop progress, I'm 3 out of 12 with 1 Void Waker piece, 1 Useless Ring, and 1 Unupgraded Revenant Weapon. Well, that didn't take long, I think it was like 10 minutes. I have another spider task, 88 more kills. Treasonous Ring number 2, I can safely put that one in the looting bag because I do not care if I lose it. The levels are coming in very slowly whenever I have some time to AFK, I either do mining or woodcutting depending on how much I need to AFK. Um, but we're getting closer and closer to 99 in both of them, and I think by the time leagues are over, they're definitely gonna both be 99, so that'll be super sweet. That's funny, I got the identical drop in back-to-back -back kills down to the supply drop, the strange fruit extra roll, and the common drop. I wonder what the chance of that is, but we got 15 left on the task here. Got myself an ancient statuette. This is the two mil one. Uh, it broadcasts everyone in here, so it's it's time to get out of here. One thing to note is when you get like rare or expensive items, don't put them in your looting bag uh, because you always lose what's in your looting bag. Put them in your inventory uh, so that if you die, you lose your plus one. So like I would have lost my salve amulet instead there, uh, but I'd rather lose the salve amulet than the two, two mil uh, totem or like a rep weapon or anything like that. That is Revenant task complete. The back-to-back -back is super nice. Picked up my first ancient crystal. Uh, it's currently in my looting bag. I always forget uh, to put things in there. Uh, but it is an item that can be used to make the Wilderness Obelisk in your house. You need four of them, so until I get the other three, it's pretty useless. There are a couple intricacies with Spindle that I've found to make this pretty easy. Um, first off is you can hit the boss twice right at the start and then swap over to darts. Um, it just works well to the timing and then put your weapon back on and you're attacking him when he moves again. 
The second thing is that you can kind of AFK now until the next move. Uh, because he's not going to do anything to this. It kind of does everything on the odd one. Now after two moves, he's going to use his web attack. And I always try to stand closest to the corner. And then when the web comes out, just walk across it. And that should lead to you never going out. Now for future web walks, it's always two after the minion spawn. So I'll come back when the next minion spawn happens. Um, until then, you can kind of just AFK with melee on. Uh, but got the next minion spawn, so now I'm going to pay attention to the count. Okay, so he moved here. It's another AFK one. And I don't need to do anything until it moves again. Alright, so it came over here. Now I want to get as close to the wall as possible while still attacking. And then when the third attack happens, I just move out of the way. And boom, it's on the edge. I'm not going to run into it. No worry. Typically with the Zami host, I get the odd kill with three, uh, but most of them is mostly with two. Didn't get it in one trip, but I got it in the second trip. I think I can definitely pencil in 20 kills per trip. Um, and then lower is if a PK interrupts me, higher if I get significant amount of restore drops. Uh, so the Turial Tash should take like two trips each time. And the Crystallia task should be like four or five. I just got myself a green dragon task. I have to kill 92 green dragons. And I thought to myself, well, green dragons are probably going to be the way that I actually train prayer up to 99. And I am going to get some bank prayer from bossing. But primarily, I'm going to need to bank up a lot of dragon bones. And you know what? Killing green dragons is probably going to be the way I bank those 10,000 or so dragon boats I need. So I thought, you know what? I got myself a dragon task. I can put my Slayer helmet on. And boom, that's an extra 20% damage and accuracy. I have the dragon hunter lance as well. This is the setup I went for. My four items are the Slayer helm, the amulet of torture, the dragon hunter lance, and the berserker's ring. And if I get smited... I'll lose the Slayer Helmet, but I don't think I'm going to die here because it's going to be below 30 Wilderness. Task complete. That wasn't bad at all. Let me pause the XP timer so we get an accurate look at it. Um, after I hopped, because I had to hop to get away from a bot, I got 23.3k XP per hour here, which roughly breaks down to 300 kills. 300 kills would be 22.5k. That's probably like 310 or so kills. And having that elite dire is actually a bit of a godsend. Because I was able to do those final 73 kills. Getting all the bones. And also picked up three in sold heads. So I'm banking well over 150k prayer experience per hour while doing this. Well that is 500 kills at spendo. Well 502 because I missed the clip. Uh, but halfway to the 1000 mark. It's a 1 in 9, 12 drop rate, but it's easier to just think of it as a 1 in 1,000 drop rate. And I was thinking, you know what? Because, like, really spider tasks are the only thing that's, like, stopping me from just grinding out the rest of the Void Waker at uh, Calvarion, I thought it might be a good idea to bring some uh, Slaughter Bracelets. So I think on the next trip, I'm going to bring one with me and see how that goes. See how good at I, I am at remembering to swap, because I... I tend to forget those sorts of things, but if I can add 10, 20 kills onto each task, that will mean I'll be spending a lot less time Turial skipping and a lot more time killing the boss. Unfortunately, a PKer interrupted me there, but I was on my longest trip yet. That was the 30th kill of the trip, and I still had basically the supplies I started with minus the combat potions. That is task complete. Ended up killing 91 spiders, which is pretty nice. I didn't get the uh, bracelet on every kill. Like, I forgot it on that last kill. Uh, but I did add 14 kills to the task because the initial one was 77. And if I'm able to do that every single task, add like 10 to 14, 10 to 15 sort of range to the task, that means like it could be like one or two less spider tasks that I have to get, which I will take any day of the week. Revenant. Task done. I think I'm now at uh, the drop rate where I should have two rolls on the table. 
Yep, I'm at 1272 kills all on task, mostly skilled. Sometimes I let my skill drop for one or two kills, and the drop rate when skilled is 1 in 583. That's to hit any four of these items, so we're now 2.1-ish uh, times drop rate, and we only have one. Um, so hopefully I can pick up a second one soon, and it's not a duplicate Damron Scepter. Well, I had to teleport out, but I just had my longest trip ever at 49 freaking kills. Yeah, pretty, pretty impressive. Uh, to say the least, I think the only reason why I had to teleport out was because of PKers. Like, look at this inventory. I still have, like, 16 restores, a full super combat. Uh, still have some stamina. So, like, I could have lasted a lot longer. Um, but I didn't want to risk it with a PKer out there. Um, I picked up a Dragon Two-Hander as well. So, now, now that's the fifth time I've hit the unique table at Spindle. And all five have sucked. Task complete. It's amazing how long these take once you start using slaughter bracelets and you get a, a big roll from Crystillia. That was 121 spindle killed. Uh, you can see on the time, I didn't have to hop once, so it took me about 3 hours and 45 minutes to get those kills done. Kind of follows through with that like low 30 kills per hour that I was uh, thinking I was having, probably like 33, 34 once you take into consideration all the banking time. That is 999 tasks. It's been like 30 or 40 tasks, I think, since I've gotten the spiders or revs tasks. It's been quite a while, but I definitely don't want to miss this Konar task because I think it's actually a thousand points uh, for this Konar task. So that will 100% be worth it. And 167 Dagonoth in the Lighthouse. That is a super easy task. Ended up getting crashed by an Iron Man. At the very end of the task, but it actually helped me out because I was able to complete the qu task quicker. I gained a thousand points, putting me up to 2,500. Uh, meaning when I'm done with this worldy grind, I'm definitely going to have a, a lot of points stored up to potentially spend on boss slayer tasks. Maybe go back to Basilisk Knights, uh, try to do a couple thousand more kills there. All that sort of stuff. But... That makes for an easy segue. We got our spider's task. That is the second dragon two-hand sword of the day of the task. Like, I'm hitting the table at a good rate. Like, it, if you count up all the uniques, it's like a, it is a one in a hundred-ish chance. Uh, it just happens to be that the ones that I'm getting are unlucky. Got another Laren's key, that task. I'm up to 36 total. Another task complete. I'm now at three wildy tasks in a row, and they've all been spiders. And my kill count is now 964, which means I finally crossed the drop rate for the Void Waker piece, uh, which is 1 in 912. Well, uh, that was not the collection log I was looking for on this grind, but I got Mystic Gloves Light. So I did some DPS calculations, and it turns out that the Fang is slightly better on Spindle than the Hasta. And with this setup, it's almost identical. It's 7.48 DPS for the Hasta versus 7.52 DPS for the Fang. It should be basically not noticeable because, like, less than, like, 0 0.2, 0 0.5 of a DPS I don't think is very noticeable. But it's going to have the two nice little perks associated with it. First off, I can use the Fang spec, so I don't need to bring the mace. Just one less thing to click. And the second thing is that it's going to be much more consistent kills. Like, I won't get really quick kills where the Hosta just goes off and hits very quickly. But I won't get the slow kills where I get like eight zeros in a row. So this should be a good balance between the two of them. And I'm hoping that um, it'll turn out. I got 58 left on the task. Um, and I'll see how the rest of this task goes. And if I hate it, I can always just swap back to the Hosta. All 86 Spires have been slain. The task is over. And now I've hit over a thousand Spindle. Um, I did like using the Fang. I think I'm going to keep up with the Fang in the future. Simply because, like, the DPS is the same. I think my kill per hour was maybe one higher. But that's just hit RNG. Um, so I'm not taking any stock in that. I'm basically assuming it's the same. But it's way more reclined because I'm not swapping to the mace every other kill. And um, it's way more consistent, like, 
I know if the boss has 20 HP, it's not going to be like four whacks in a row where I miss with the hoster or low roll. It's like, Fang's going to get it. I do want to highlight a couple stacks that I already have. I got 37 Larens keys, 7,000 red spider eggs, uh, 1,200 limpert roots. Limpert roots aren't that big of a deal. They're really easy to farm, but that just saves me um, planting a lot of limperts. And 2,800 super compost, and I'll probably get like another two, maybe 3,000 of that. So I'm going to have over 10,000 ultra compost charges in my bottomless bucket. I hope to God I... Uh, I never need to make my own super compost ever again after this grind. Bloody hell, I got a second one. <laughs> no. Oh, this game, like, I could have picked, I could have got any of the weapons, but I just, I got two of the Theron Scepters. whoop de doo Revenant task over and a nice little drop ended. I also got a double... Uh, Dragon Longsword drop this trip. So, 550k for a half filled looting bag. I will take that. I wonder what my GP stack is going to be uh, by the time I'm done. Everything in the wilderness. Like, it could get up. Could get up to like 200 mil, maybe. Whoops. Uh, wasn't even recording. We just picked up the Fangs of Venatus, which means I should probably bank. If I see a single white dot outside, I am going to bank. That is a collection log item. Uh, right now, this item is completely useless to me. Um, it has no practical use because I need a crossbow in order to use it. But I'm one Revenant Knight kill away from a crossbow at any time. Uh, what it does is upgrade the crossbows to a Webweaver boat, which gives it the special attack. Um, I'll go more in depth into that if I ever get a crossbow. Um, but with me killing 1,500 Revenant Knights and not seeing one yet, I'm not too uh, optimistic. As soon as I get the Void Waker piece from Spindle, I'm stopping doing Slayer, which means I'm not getting Revenant tasks, which means I am not doing Revenant Knights, which means I don't even have a chance for the crossbow. I got baited so hard. I saw the orange text. I saw the clan message. Now my looting bag has a dragon pickaxe and a dragon two-hander in it. That's the first time a dragon pickaxe has been like, yeah, you got me. Task done, uh, 1152 kills. And I'm running the wrong way, you know, I, you know it's too late for me when I start doing that. There's no, there's no way, there's no way. Bruh, <laughs> three Thamrod Scepters? Yeah, this game. I am doing some raids with the group's 405s. Hopefully we can pick up a new unique here. Got myself a purple. Uh, what is it going to be? We have 1 in 24 shadow chance. And it is a duplicate fang. And I got the yellow gem! The yellow gem is way more important than the fang. Holy shit, that's really good to have. The Yellow Karis is a version of the Karis Partisan, and it's made by adding the Yellow Gem to it. It is very important for Toa, especially to push higher invocations. It has a special attack where you can spend 50 prayer points to get your HP brought up to 20% of your maximum. For me, that is 118 HP. This is an alternate form of healing inside the tombs beyond Bruise and Blood Fury, and heavily decreases the RNG element of getting hit at Baba or Akka. Plus, more Wiggle Room at Kefri and Zabak. It also has a passive where any NPC killed with it will heal for 12 HP at the cost of 5 prayer points. So easy, no spec costing, healing at Monkey Room or Kefri. I can drop 2 brews for this which would normally heal 144 HP and bring 2 restores instead. And I can get 5 care specs out of those restores which could be upwards of 500 HP healed. It's just insanely powerful and dense for sustain inside the tombs. One thing that Jagex did uh, recently is they released the Path of Glove Request, and this is a pretty cool milestone because it gets you up to 300 total quest points. And with 300 quest points, you get an extra block slot. So here I have slot 3, which I need 300 quest points to use the slot, and I want to maximize my block list and my chance of getting spider tasks, and as you can see, all the Konar Slayer I've been doing, I'm up to 2,500 points, so wasting 100 on a block is not a big deal. 
quest complete two more quest points uh get some nice experience um i think i'm 99 in all these skills so it won't actually help me but the big thing is that i'm up to 300 total quest points getting that extra block slot that i talked about but I can go ahead and add to my block list Earth Warriors. Earth Warriors are a six weight task. I have every task that is seven weight or higher already blocked, except for Hellhounds, which will eventually replace Calphites. I just haven't got them. And last time I got them, I forgot to replace Calphites. Didn't take long to get the Hellhounds. I can unblock Calphites, which means I can now get them from Turiel and block some Hellhounds. Now my block list is set up ideally for the Revenant and Wildy Boss grind. With the block list set up this way, I have a 5.4% chance of getting a Spider task, a 4.5% chance of getting a Revenant task, and a 3.6% chance of getting a Green Dragon task, for a total of 13.5% chance. You can roughly assume that one in every seven or eight tasks will be one that I want to do. Blockless matters, didn't take long. Uh, like one task later, I have the spiders. Another one. Oh well. That is our second fangs of Venonatus. Add it to the collection log. It's bound to happen doing this many kills. I guess I'm back on drop rate for it. Finished my spindle task. And with that, I have now reached over 10,000 red spider eggs which is pretty crazy i don't necessarily have the the snapdragons in the bank only 74 seeds and 300 herbs to use all those and that is 105 spiders done and that gets me to the big 1500 kill maybe one day we'll get the void waker gem but i promised myself that i would not complain until 2000 kills we got 500 more kills till i can start bitching I completely missed this, but I am now at a point where Spindle is my highest killed boss at 1623 KC, surpassing my 1608 from Thermi um, and the 1500 from Leviathan. Uh, though with the kills per hour, I don't think this is the boss I've spent the most time at yet, but that might change very soon if we get over 2000 kills. Don't. Fuck. Fuck. Okay, I got the pet, like... Yay, I got a wilderness pet, but like... I saw the collection log pop up and I thought it was the gem. <sighs> At least I know I will green log this boss when I eventually get this gem, because I am not giving up. Now, in order to actually store my pet in my player-owned house, I actually needed to upgrade my home into the next tier, which is the Consecrated House. And that allows there to be up to eight pets, or actually up to nine pets in here. So once I get two more pets, I'll need to upgrade it again. Uh, but Venonas Spiderling is our eighth pet and our third boss pet between the Hell Puppy Midnight and Noon, and the Venonatus Spiderling. And that is 1,824 kills, which means I am officially drop rate. Or officially drop rate again. I am double drop rate, and uh, we're now working towards the third drop rate. Yes! 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 Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm, I got it. Holy shit. Holy shit! I'm done. Oh, the Void Waker gem. I'm out of the wilderness. Let's go. That is the second piece of Void Waker obtained. I picked that shit up so quickly and I got out of there. Let's put that right there in the bank. I'm now two out of three on the Void Waker and I just need to go to Calvarion. I was basically right over that two times drop rate. I was 1856. And this also represents, like, a really strong moment, because I am done with Wilderness Slayer. Um, I no longer need to farm tasks for the bosses. The only thing I would be doing would be farming Revenant tasks for the Rev weapons, but realistically, I would just be farming a Mace to use at Calvarion, while instead I can just use the Hasta at Calvarion. 
So I put together some of the biggest commons. I didn't want to like load everything into my inventory, but this just represents the stuff that's the most important. Uh, I got 14 and a half thousand cannonballs. It's going to be sweet for smoke devils. Um, Onyx bull tips. These are huge alks uh, with the 2200. Once I turn them, put them on the runite bolts and enchant them, they'll alk for like 9k each. So that's like 20 mil right here. This means I'm never farming spider eggs again. That's 12 and a half thousand super restores which hopefully should be a good enough good enough to last me forever. Um, and then Rune Pickaxes is another good alk to add on to the Onyx Bolt Tips. The other things uh, I wanted to talk about were the Super Compost. I can add a Volcanic Ash to this, and then I can take the Ultra Compost and put it in my Bottomless Compost Bucket, and that's about 6,000 uses there. I also have more compost from Ardeo, and I'm going to get more from... Baryon, so I don't think I'll ever have to make my own super compost again. And then antidotes are always really nice to get as a drop on an Iron Man because, well, to actually make them yourselves, you need to get magic roots, and getting magic roots is a pain in the butt with how the game currently is. I'm now up to 5 out of 12 uniques from the wilderness, completing Spindle. I also want to complete Calvarion as the Skull of Vedion is the upgrade item for the one Rev weapon that I have. Plus, the Ring of the Gods is actually good. Let's see how many KC this takes. So it looks like this is going to be my setup here for Calvarion. Um, again, I've mentioned it before, but I get to use the Salve Amulet here, which is going to give me a 20% increase on undead creatures, um, which allows me to bring four better items because I don't need to have Slayer Helm as one of the items I'm keeping. Uh, so my four items are Zamoraki and Hasta of Renic Defender. Ferocious Gloves, and the Berserker's Ring imbued. Uh, the Berserker's Ring is the cheapest of these items, so this is actually going to be my risk if I get smited. Uh, but it wouldn't be the end of the world to go get another Berserker Ring. Uh, on top of that, I basically am just risking the Helm of Night is not. I have to go buy another one. I think it's like an extra 50k, um, so it's not too big of a deal. And I can get the Climbing Boots, the Mythical Cape for 10k, and the Blessing for free. So it's like... Maybe like 60k plus potions risk. Uh, let's see what it says here. Uh, if we don't have the skull active and we're killed. Yeah, 147k risk. And that's only going to go down as I use supplies. Okay, first unique from Calvarion. Another one of the commons that we're looking forward to here at Calvarion is the Dragon Bones. Uh, you get 60 and I think it's like a 1 in 40 drop rate. I think that's the drop rate so you get about like one and a half per kill and if i'm here for a thousand kills 1500 kills that's going to be like two thousand dragon bones a million prayer experience gets me like one fifth of what i have left uh to get to 99 when you think about it this is the one where you want to go dry because it has all the really good drops with the wine of zamrax the santu serums the dragon bones uh, the items that are just hard to get on an iron, but I also don't want to do 2,000 kills with a Hasta. I think I would have a little bit of a different opinion if I had the Revenant weapon. But seeing as I want all three of the uniques from here, I'm definitely going to be here over 1,000 kills. I am now at 246 kills, which means I now am at the drop rate for any one of the Skull of Edeon, the Void Waker Blade, or the Ring of the Gods, which are the three items I get. Um, it's unfortunate that I haven't gotten lucky on any of these items yet, and I'm just picking up more dragon two-handers and dragon pickaxes, but it is what it is. Um, I am going to be here for like 1,500 total kills to get all three items, um, so I'm not too concerned about getting one early, uh, but I just want to make sure that my end game here isn't unlucky. So I can start off unlucky, just don't let me end unlucky. Picked up a skeleton champion scroll at... As I teleported away, and uh, because of a peak air, so hopefully it's still here on the ground. Yeah, I can uh, pick up the Skeleton Champion Scroll, and now I have that. Yay. That is 500 kills at the Skeleton Boy. I'm surprised I don't have any of the uniques yet. Um, like 250, sure, but at 500, I thought I would have something. Um... But we keep on going. Alrighty, alrighty. Uh, up above 600 now. And got another Dragon 2 hand sword. I, I can get the rares. But I can't get the... Uh... 
the good rare is I'm up to three dragon two-handers and three dragon pickaxes. So I have made one small change uh, to my setup here. I put on dragon boots. Um, I have four pairs of dragon boots in the bank, so I can afford to risk them. And I already have the prims, so they're not even a best in the slot if I lose them. And with the dragon boots on, my max hit goes all the way up to 51. So it's an increase of one on the max hit. So that's going to be like 2% better than the climbing boots. Um, and if I have to do another 1,000 kills here, uh, that 2% will be very helpful. Up to 689 Calvarian kills. I also did a little bit of Vedion. And the drop rates are not looking good as I have 11 pickaxes, 14 dragon duanders, and nothing... Nothing else. 750 Calvarion kills. Ooh, Nelly. This is not this is not looking good, boys. And girls. I hope there's a girl watching. But uh I've got a little bit of stunt Stockholm syndrome, a little bit of sunk cost fallacy, a little bit of all the mental problems, so we're gonna be uh we're gonna be staying here. I still have seven full days left until this is over or until League starts, um, and it took me two and a half days to get the 750 kill, so I think if I keep up this momentum, I keep up this pace, which mentally I may not, uh, I think I should be able to get to 2,500 kills by the time League starts, and just, I just hope, just hope that uh, I can complete it before Leagues, because that would be a great weight off my shoulder. Okay, I finally got an item! Okay, I got the Skull of Edion. Let's go. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, it took till 1081, but we got ourselves a Skull of Vedion. This is Jagex at its finest. Ugh. Takes me what, like... 10,081 kills to get one? Now I have two by 1096. Jagex just knows how to fuck with me. Well, I lost my world, so now is as good a time as ever uh, to upgrade the rev weapons. I think I just use a skull of Vedian on it, and it turns it into the Accursed Scepter. But the magic attack bonus difference is plus 7. On top of that, you can see I don't have a special attack there. Uh, but when I swap over to the Accursed Scepter, I now have Condemn. Fire a powerful spell with increased damage and accuracy. Lowering your target's magic and defense levels by up to 15. It's basically a magic Bandos Godsword or Dragon Warhammer. It's a Thamron uh, special or a Cursed Scepter attack. This will be really useful at places where you use magic. Um, thinking something like Whisper, where you can lower its magic level, making yourself more accurate. Or even like the Mage Hand at home. Uh, you've got to be kidding me. That is the... Third skeleton champion scroll. First one I've actually gotten from Calvarian itself. Okay, okay. We can now be okay about being dry on Void Waker because I also got the Ring of the Gods. It's okay. And a couple hours later, we're up over 1500 kills and I am done for the day. That is a lot of Sandfew Serums. Yeah, I got three uh sandfew serum drops this trip making the looting bag have a pretty large value but let's talk about the ring of the gods the ring of the gods is as per its name the prayer ring it provides on its base plus four prayer and plus one in all defensives uh while unimbued it's not that good because it has the same prayer bonus as the ring of suffering but much worse defensive bonuses but what we can do here is we can upgrade this ring by imbuing it. And it requires the Holy Wrench in the inventory to imbue it uh, because it also gives you the Holy Wrench effect. The defensive bonuses are unchanged, but the prayer bonus is now plus 8, which is pretty massive. In this setup, I go from 25 to 33 prayer bonus. Pretty effective. With the Ring of the Gods obtained, I now have both of the non-Void Waker uniques from Vedion and Calvarion, meaning I just have the Void Waker Blade to get, and then I am done. I am finito with the Wilderness for probably ever until they release more best-in-slot content from there. 
We've done it again. Double drop rate on the Void Waker piece. I'm up to 1824, which is double the drop rate. You know how earlier in the video I was like, wow, Spindle is now my highest killed boss in the game, passing Thermi. Well, uh, looks like Spindle didn't last as the champion for too long. Alvaron is now the champion at 1857 kills. Yikes. All right, we're over 2,200 kills. Just lost our world to someone crashing. And you know what? I'm going a little bit crazy, so I'm going to try something a little bit crazy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the Hosta and Avernic with the uh, Scythe of Vitter and the Bandos Chestplate. I know it's kind of crazy. The DPS calculators say it's going to be better. I am a little bit worried about like having to go into the wilderness. Um, with a scythe because I think it might attract a little bit more attention so even though I'm getting more kills per hour I might end up with less. I do have ample charges. Uh, I have 8,000 in the scythe and if I look at my vials of blood in the bank uh, I have 780 more and like the only place I've actually been using the scythe of Vitter is at Tov itself where you're gonna definitely be profiting vials of blood so I'm not worried about using charges here. And I think the only other place where it's like best in slot for me to use the scythe is Nightmare. All right, it's a good start so far. I just hit a 60. My old kill per hour with this was about 32 with the Hosta. Uh, so if I can get myself above that, I'll be pretty happy. Just over 12 minutes in and that was my ninth kill with the scythe. Um, things are going pretty well. I uh, haven't been attacked yet, and it looks like when I'm not getting attacked, I'm getting like somewhere between 40 and 45 kills per hour. It's super nice. I'm going to see what it's like at the end of the hour, and if it's above 40, I can definitely see myself sticking with the scythe at least for the next 500 or so kills uh, that I do before leagues. Um, Charges-wise, it seems to use up 20 charges per kill. Um... So, not too shabby. I have a ton of blood runes in the bank. I have a ton of cash now from all this rev grind. Or I can buy blood runes and make a ton of them uh, very quickly. Uh, so, I am not concerned about any of the costs here. Another skull of Vedia. And that's like the first non-dragon drop uh, unique I've had in quite a while. But that is the fifth, sixth, fifth skull. Um, so, we've entered the territory where the skulls are useless. I don't even have enough scepters to use them all. Oh. Okay. Okay. Well, I got the pet. <laughs> oh, this is funny. Well, the good news is that uh, whenever I finish this boss, I will also get the green log. The uh, bad news is that that I got a collector log and I got trolled that it wasn't the Void Waker bit, uh, piece, but. That is my second Wilderness boss pet, um, which will be good in the long run because I won't have to come back here. All right, that's going to be the end of the night. It's been a long day of scything Calvarion, and I picked up basically 400 kills today. Um, so that's 50 or 60 higher than my previous best for a single day, which uh, just shows the power of the scythe. Uh, I have one more day to go before I'm going to take a break for leagues. Um, so I might be able to get up to like 2,800, maybe 2,900. Uh, but collection log wise, we now have every single drop except uh, for the Void Waker Blade. Uh, five skulls, two rings, and the pet. I missed it, but there is the big 2,500 kills. I don't know why it's a big number. It's just a round number. Um, and it also is basically the border for top 100 ranked. Uh, I think Right now, top 100 is 2503. Uh, so unless I get the blade in the next three kills, it looks like we're going to end up as a top 100 Calvarian killer among all Iron Men. Yeah, the, cur the curve bone curse doesn't end. Oh, man. Well, I guess with 2500 kills, it's not that rare to get a curve bone, but it does hurt to get the 1 in 5k. Oh, I got it. 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 Oh my god. It's done. Yes! The day before. It's done. 
609 kills. It's done. Let's just double check that it's in the looting bag. Much like the very first Void Waker piece I got from RDO, it was the very first kill of a trip where I got the piece. But I am done. I am done. I am done. Oh. This is perfect timing, too. It is quite literally two days before leagues. I can now relax, take a break, get set up for leagues, and it's over. Holy shit, I did it just in time. I got a little scared at first when looking at the map, but the person who makes the Void Wicker is not in the wilderness. They're just in the uh, underground area at Ferox Enclave, and I believe we just talked to her, and uh, she'll combine it for 500k. Yep, so we'll have Madame Sekiro assemble the Void Waker for 500k, and now we have the Void Waker, one of the best special attack weapons in the game. In my inventory, I have the major loot that I got from the bosses. As you can see, I have 9400 Super Compost, which means I basically should never need uh, to use it. To farm up any super compost myself because that's going to get doubled to 18,000 with the bottomless compost bucket. So kill me if I have to use super compost again. 3,500 wines, which is enough wines of Zami to do all my dwarf wheats and then some. So that's pretty much already 99 herb lord banked. Alongside that, uh, dragon bones, that's 4,200. So that's like I want to say like 2.2, 2.3 million experience, but I will lose some bones, so that'll get me up to like maybe 96 prayer. Uh, we'll see. Uh, this rune I door, each one of these, once you like do all the alking and smithing of it, is worth like 50 mil GP. So that's pretty impressive. Magic logs, I think, are kind of useless for me now, but I now have a stack that I'm never going to go through. These herbs are, again, just more nice to have herbs. Uh, and the secondaries here, these three, the spider eggs, the limpet roots, and Mortmire fungus. I think all three of those will last forever, and I'll never have to gather those secondary again. Pretty sweet. Um, same with mahogany logs. I don't think I'm going to train much construction past 99. Um, and then on the uniques front, these are all kind of cool items. I got the Void Waker. I got my two accursed scepters. I have the two pets. I got the skeleton champion scroll and the ring of the gods. And then I just kind of wanted to show off my dragon pickaxe stack, which is 15 of them, so worth 15 mil. And the fangs of Edenatus, which I am going to keep the fangs in the bank just in case I get a crossbow one day, though I don't see myself going back to revs. Uh, it just it would be a shame to drop trade them over or put them in desk coffer and then get a crossbow one day. And we got these 59 Larens keys, which I think might be the last thing... Uh, I do this video, go open them up, see if we can spoon a piece of Dagonite. Otherwise, we get a lot of more nice commons. Oh my god, I got a Dagonite robe top on the third key. Holy shit. There's no way. Anyway, that is the wilderness quote-unquote complete. Let's look at these collection logs. Callisto and Ardeo, I got that one quick. 344 kills and 120 duo kills. I already had a little bit of KC with the dragon pickaxe. So I'm only 3 out of 6 there. But Venonatus and Spindle took me 1,856 kills to get this gem, which allowed me to pick up everything, including spooning the pet at around 1,600 kills. As for Vedion and Calvarion, this one was the longest, uh, with it taking 2,600 Calvarion kills, and I feel like I very much deserve this blade. And I got all the uniques, which... It ended well getting the Skull of Vetti on, so I don't need to worry about coming back for that, and the Ring of the Gods, which again, I'll probably end up using in my Inferno attempts. So I started the Void Waker on October 15th, and I am now done on November 13th, and I was doing this almost all day every day, um, so a solid month. I want to say I spent at least 200 hours going for this, probably approaching up on 250 hours. No, God! No, God, please, no! No! No!